Hey, what's up, guys? It's me, Sunny T. Right back at you with another podcast for marketers exclusive. Now, I want you to go to Cheeseburger Nation for my podcast, Stealthy Millionaire on Instagram, YouTube. It's podcast for marketers and billionaire vids on Snapchat, billionaire vid without the S on Twitter, podcast for marketers.com for your free MP3 player. You got to pay for your fucking shipping, right? And I have a kick ass SMMA course over there that's kicking Ty Lopez's right in the old britches. You can see all of those links down below in the description and the first comment as well. Go to funnelhackerpro.com for my Facebook group. It's kick ass, man. Dudes are over there making big progress. Smash. That thumbs up, man. I want you to break your fucking mouth, man. If you like this video, man, make sure you comment below. Let me know, man. I want to know what you guys think on these videos, man. I really enjoy the comments. I like talking to each and every one of you. And we have a really cool community going over there. So sub, fuck him, subscribe to this channel. If you like the content, I do videos Every day, nonstop. I'll never stop. Boom. All right, guys. So now we're on tip number 19. And I wanted to talk to you guys about emailing. Okay. So I've been noticing, uh, again, that during the summertime, I actually sent an email out uh, to you guys to watch these fucking things, man. Um, I, I think it's important. And I want to let you know that I'm, I'm in the trenches with you. Again, I'm trying to stay focused on work as well. I love going outdoors, even if I'm not fishing. I just like being outside. But uh, things that do keep me inside is actually working and doing these things. So I want you to make sure that you do um, do these tips, man. They're quick. They're 10 minutes, man. They're nothing. You know, you can uh, watch these in your car or listen to them later. I'm going to have somebody rip all my videos, man, to make them uh, audio for you guys. All right, so... Today, we're going to talk about emailing. Now, emailing is a really, it's it's a funny subject, man. It's, uh, um, you know, I thought it was some fucking like big secret and it's really not, right? I didn't start feeling comfortable until I started writing emails myself and started understanding that it's really not that big of a deal. First of all, I have a um, uh, an email course from a guy named Matt Fury. He doesn't make it anymore. It's hard to find. It's like fucking... Um, gold it costs a thousand bucks and it's an audio course um and it's a real simple course though right but i wanted to talk to you about how you should email first i'm thinking about either reselling that matt fury course or giving it away as a little present every once in a while right if you guys are interested let me know maybe i'll, I'll resell it on this little it won't be anywhere near a thousand bucks but it is worth emailing is is worth knowing how to do because the money is there um anyway so I wanted to talk about how I email and I can't give you an entire course because it's copywriting, isn't it? So what I wanted to tell you was, first of all, your subject line has to be kick-ass, right? That's the first thing. Now, there's also a, a thing called a second subject line that I'm going to teach you guys about actually in like an email course, right? But like, so when people see like, okay, so your subject line is kick ass, right? Then there's another thing says, you know, how to kick ass, okay? You can do this like in a in a, a second subject line when people get your email, kind of like a teaser on what would be, be said. And I'll have to show you guys how to do that, right? So everything that you do in email writing has to lead on to somebody reading something else, right? And the one thing that I'm good at is telling a story, okay? And first of all, I'm going to tell you your your subject line is important, okay? And then the you know, the the second subject line, okay, is important. And then I put a big headline in my emails right at the top. If you've ever gotten an email from me, you'll get a headline. This is important as well, right? Each one of these things leads to you reading the next, okay? And then the first couple of lines will lead someone into reading the rest of the email. Now, you'll see another thing that I've learned from Russell Brunson, which was awesome, and he learned it from somebody else. I can't remember who he said he learned it from. 
But when I write my emails, you guys will notice that I'll write an email out and I'll go dot, dot, dot. And don't fucking try to be some grammar dude, man, because it's not important. All right. So, you know, you got a lot of people, oh, man, you know, your grammar's wrong and or whatever. Or you don't have commas. None of that shit matters. You know, you capitalize, you know, every other word. I used to have a girlfriend years ago. He said, why do you write like that? Well, because I fucking do. And it doesn't matter. Right. So then I'll write another couple of lines and I'll do a dot, dot, dot. And I'll write one short line and a dot, dot, dot. And I'll do like three lines and a dot, dot, dot. And what that does. And then sometimes you'll highlight are capitalized, are put in bold. People skim through your email. So they should be able to read those highlighted words, bolded words, and get a good general sense of what you're talking about. So what's going to happen when they read your email is they're going to see something highlighted and they're going to look through it and they're going to look at these bolded words that you might have, right? and different little sentences, short sentences, and they'll go, okay, this could be interesting, and then they'll go back through, and they'll read the whole fucking email, right? So that's one thing that I want you to understand and how to write an email. The next thing is, is what are you going to fucking say in the email, okay? So I'm going to give you an example. I get a 35% open rate with my emails. I don't want to open my thing up and show you. Just trust me. The industry standard is 10%, with a like 3% click-through rate, right? I blow that out of the, the water, okay? I get pretty much standard 35% open rate. And I don't know, man, my click-through rate is crazy. It's somewhere in the area of 10%, right? It's a bananas click-through rate. All right, now, how do I achieve that? Number one, I have an awesome fucking email list. You guys that are on my list are fucking awesome. Um, and I don't... now. There's a, there is a uh, thing in the industry where you're supposed to email your list every day, okay? I haven't done that yet. I'm not going to lie to you and say that I do email my list every day. Um, I do more um, talking to my people that follow me very closely, either on YouTube, on Facebook, and then when I have something to promote or when I'm just like the other day I emailed my list, these summer chips. I nurture my list probably three times a month, four times a month. I'm very bad at emailing, okay? I should do it more. But they say you're supposed to email every day. And so if you've got like a doctor or somebody like that that has 12,000, 24,000 patients, you know, or 10,000 patients on his list, you should email every day, okay? That's, that's as far as frequency goes on what you should be doing. Now, let's talk about what you should actually say in the email, right? So... If you know your doctor's, uh, how he talks, or you're sending these out for yourself, you know, I always say Dr. Crack Your Back, right? If you know you spend enough time with Dr. Crack Your Back, if you've taken my advice and you've done your, done your internship, you should understand how to talk, how he talks. If he talks like a dick, relax it a lot. Do not talk in an email like it's a blog, okay? This is not a blog. This is a personal conversation that you're having, so it needs to feel personal. And don't fake it, though. I know this one chick that sends out emails, and she tries to really go over the top with trying to be super, like, cool, and it comes off as, I don't know, man. There's a lot of fucking vernacular in there going on, like she's trying to be an African-American, and it's just not working out for me at all. Don't be fake. People can fucking tell when you're being fake. So I, I write... Like I talk. Now, I had a, a writer friend of mine. His name was Michael years ago in Cancun, Mexico, which is what's going to bring you to, to my last email. In Cancun, Mexico, and I started writing a blog years ago. And Mike says, man, it's a really cool blog because you write like you talk. And I like that. It's conversational, right? So my last um, email was Cancun, Ceviche, and Coronas. Okay. Some people knew what ceviche was and some people didn't, but you know what Cancun and Coronas are. And I just put those three C's in there to try to like get, a, a, you know, it's summertime. It's, you know, what is he talking about? Cancun, ceviches, and Coronas. And the entire email was about how I um, lost out on some money by letting the summer fuck me over. Now, that's one thing I want to talk about. Stories, if you have them, are important. But here's the thing. They don't have to be your fucking stories. 
You can borrow cool stories. And you can find that shit all over the internet, man. But one of the biggest places that you can find that from is Reddit, right? Um, and just like, like some cool shit I did last night or whatever. There's tons of stories. And you don't have to lie and say it was your story. You can actually, actually say, I was on Reddit and I read this shit. And tell the fucking story as the person told it, right? And then, um, and what you do is you kind of have to, I'll show you how to do it, right? So then, And then at the end of the story, teach a lesson and then a small pitch at the end, right? People, people don't mind if you pitch them, but just don't be a fucking dick about it and promo your shit. So I'm going to show you how to do this for your clients or for yourself. So you tell the story, and my story was how Barry um, invited me to go to Spain. We were still living in Cancun at the time, and he was going to, um, the guy's name was Sasha. He's a Russian dude. He was going to uh, work for this Russian guy, and he offered me to go to Russia, and I kind of fucked off for the summer. Now, here's the pain point, and this is important, right? You know, I and, and I even said it. I let summer... And the shit that things do for summer. So here was my pain point, right? Here was a story start to catch your ear, okay? And then the pain point. I let summer catch me into, you know, doing what summer people do, drinking Coronas, eating ceviche and drinking Coronas all day, hanging out with chicks, partying or whatever. That's the pain point right there, right? Because we know that that's what we want to do for summertime. So I hit him in the gut shot with that because I know that's what you're doing right now and you're not thinking about work, okay? And then I told a result, which is even worse, is that Barry made 250 grand and I was supposed to have 25, 20% of that, right? So now I'm telling you that I lost 50,000 bucks, right? Right there, I'm telling you, I lost 50,000 bucks from fucking drinking Coronas and eating ceviche over summer and not working, right? Because I didn't get to go on the trip, right? So now I'm digging in that pain point a little bit more and showing how I fucked up, right? And didn't make any money. And then I corrected it and showed you how to fix it by leaving you a link to my sunny summer tips, right? In the end, which was what would be equivalent to a pitch. And I did pitch a... um uh my affiliate fast tracks on how to, how I actually lived in Cancun and made money. Right. And that flopped. Nobody clicked my link. I was so sad. All right. So, and, but they did click on my YouTube link though. Right. <laughs> so this was a whop, 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 right. That's okay. That's all right. I didn't sell anything through this email, which was cool, but people did. And it was something like, I don't know, 30 or 40 people out of my list. Uh, again, the 10% click-through rate, uh, so it's more like 60 or whatever. So I, I don't have very many people on my email list, but it does really well. And then I had the 30% open rate, and I did get a bump in views through YouTube from sending out this email, right? And so here is how I do it. And I told you guys before, this is a really quick class. I hope so. Um, it's kind of like it's 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 kind of like uh, it's kind of hard to do this, but I wanted to talk, talk to you about it and tell you to practice it, right? So it's a story a lesson, and then a pitch, okay? And this is how I do it, right? So I told a story about Barry and me in Cancun, okay? And then my lesson about how I lost the 250 grand, okay? And then my pitch was watch my YouTube video. This works good, man. It works good. And at first, it's going to feel awkward to you. And it's, it's, you know, like, how do I, how could you take any story? But you'll start to understand that you could take any story and turn it into a lesson and then pitch them on whatever you want them to do. It's really easy. It's calm. It's, my stories are all real, though. I don't make them up because I'm, I'm fucking a million years old. So I have a ton of stories, right, that I can tell. Awesome stories. And I always just figure them out on the fly. Like, oh, shit, I can tell them the story, right? But that's all right. You can borrow stories by going and looking at history. First of all, look at the History Channel. Look at Netflix um, documentaries. Uh, look on Reddit for stories. Just Google blog for aw awesome stories. You know, like the guy, like the guy, I'll give you an example. There was a guy. Remember that guy that was in a, uh, he was in an accident. He got a, he caught his arm between a rock and he was fucking uh, climbing. And he had to cut his own arm off with a Swiss Army knife. You remember that story? Right? 
Well, that's a fucking story right there, right? So you start off with that story about this guy that got caught having to cut his own fucking arm off with a Swiss army knife, right? And you tell that story and then there's a pain point in there somewhere, right? For your people, you can turn that pain. If you're in a survival niche, it's easy. It, even if you're working for a chiropractor, there's some kind of way you can turn that story of courage, right? And pain and what that guy had to go through, right? And in the end, he's told a story. He's um, encouraged other people to still go um, hiking, blah, 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 right? So there's um, there's a, 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 a silver lining at, you know, there's a, 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 you know, a light at the end of the tunnel. There's a rainbow there at the end of the rainbow. There's, there's gold or whatever. So you can start off by telling that story about how that guy uh, fucked up. And then Dr. Crack you back. Well, there'll be a lesson in there somewhere, right? Um, about, you know, um, you can get through the pain or whatever. I don't fucking know. I'd have to talk to think about it, but I'm just telling you that that's how you can use someone else's stories. Okay. There's other lessons, man. Like there's a guy that was, uh, um, and I could do it myself too. There was a guy that, um, that was caught out in the ocean. It was a really good story. And I listened to the book. I heard, I saw it on one of those, I almost died shows. And then I actually wouldn't listen to the audio book. And he was on a raft for 90 days. Right. And the raft was punctured and everything. And, uh, he ended up building an, an ecosystem of shit attached to his raft. So there was muscles and stuff after a while. I don't know if you guys know this, but things just start growing on your boat after you've been in the boat for a while. Well, there's little bitty fish that eat and feed on these little muscles and stuff. And in those little bait fish, bring around the bigger fish, right? And so he was fucking seeing those bigger fish and stabbing them and eating them raw. <laughs> they were those mahi-mahis, right? And this ecosystem is what kept him alive, right? Well, the same thing goes for marketing, doesn't it? You can build your own traffic, okay? And build your own ecosystem. You see how I just did that? Do you see? Just that quickly, I've taken a story and I've attached it to marketing because it's true. You can build an ecosystem and which is a funnel. That's that's all this is. You know, it's him, right? And he's eating. But these little fish here are bait. Okay. These big fish right here are prospects. And he's getting those prospects. So he has bait. Here's a prospect getting the bait of lead magnet, and then it's you getting the prize. That is an ecosystem, and that's how funnels work, right? So I just took a story really quickly and showed you how to turn it into marketing, right, and make it a marketing story. And I just came up with that over the on the fly. So get out there, and what I want you to do, what your tip is, this is an extra long class, right, but it's cool. All classes can't be short and bullshit. And I wanted to, you know, uh, if I can, I'll throw some long ones in here every once in a while. Every class that I do cannot be a home run. I understand that, but I really do want you guys to get some of this stuff, right? So what I want you to do over the next uh, few days of summer, we're kind of getting through summer now, but over the next few days of summer, I want you to write one email a day over the next, hmm, let's see, one email a day for 30 days. That was a challenge that I got from my uh, mentor for email marketing was to write one email a day for 30 days. And I did that and I became good. And now when I write my emails, it doesn't take me long. I bust them down and I write an email and I get a really good response. I actually have people um, reply to my emails. Hey, dude, this is a great email. Because sometimes I'll just send out a motivational email. This is a great email, man. Thanks a lot. I needed that motivation, Sonny. Blah, 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 right? So it's not like a bugging thing. People people have commented in my group. and says, man, that email you sent me, man, sent a tear down my cheek or whatever. So you'll get good at writing emails. And not every one of them can be a home run. But, you know, you'll get good at it. And people will be happy to summer break. Ha, ha, ha.